one is just for my notes, so I'm just going to ask you some questions about when you... you know, so, how far back does your family go fishing, do you reckon? Uh, three generations. Right. And that's out always in Norman's Bay? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so when did you first go out? Uh, I mean, I went out with my dad and my granddad, uh, herring drifting, when I was just big enough to walk down the beach. So right. Put me in the front of the boat with all the spare floats. Right. And, uh, and so, how long have you had this boat? This boat, we've had seven years now. Right. Seven years. And how many boats is that? Oh, um, <laughs> probably six family boats mm -hmm. now. So it's getting quite a long right. time. The boat we had before this one, I had for 18 years. And what sort of boat is this? This is a Kingfisher 33. Right. Built in Cornwall. Right. Unfortunately, because of um, the way the industry's gone on the you know, with quotas and things, the under 10 metre fleet is uh, really struggling, and unfortunately, so are the boat builders. So mm -hmm. they've, they've now stopped building fishing boats. Um, and another uh, Cornish yard, Kingfish, right. sickness as well, they've now stopped right. building boats. So. And what's the name of this boat? It's called the Hamster. Right, and how big is she? Uh, just under 10 metres, 9.98 metres. Okay, so this is now, we're, what, where are we now? We're early May, yeah. and what are you fishing for now? We're on the cuttlefish. Right. Blackstone, yeah. And uh, how many traps have you got out? Uh, we're working 300 traps, for right. example, and we're visiting half every other day. Right. And so how long does the uh, cuttlefish season last for? Uh, it generally starts... April, early April, depending on how the water temperature. Yeah. And it then hopefully goes on certainly towards the end of June and sometimes into July, maybe. Okay, and so you're Graham, Graham Doswell, and who's your crewman? Um, my crewman is uh, David Bray. Right. He's been with me now for probably nearly three years. Right. Interesting. And so the cuttlefish season runs on from now through till June? At the end of June and maybe just into June. Right. Yeah. And then what would you change to after that? Uh, we, we come back on the sole, so we'll yep. go to the sole. And uh, probably for so maybe the end of August, middle of the end of August. So then we've got the big mesh nets on where we've got our mixed fishery, which right. is a nice big sole. And also, we also then put the pots on and we dance a lobster. And right, and how long does that last for? Uh, the lobster crab go right up to Christmas. Right. And uh, the mixed fishery goes right well, right way right around to when we start sawing again in the spring, which is right. probably the beginning of March. And how's the fishing going? What do you hope for? Is it better than it was? or? Fishing's great. Um, there's, there's, um, there's plenty of fish here for us all. It's, it's a quite a buoyant fleet here. Quite a load of a lot of young lads um, in our fleet here, which is really good. Right. And, and is there an interest in your fish? Do you do people recognise the quality and things like that? Absolutely. Yeah. We've um, we've got one, one or two people that buy fish off of us, and um, they they. Their customers have actually marked on the quality of it. They, and also, they, they also the, the people in the say how much longer it actually lasts before they. Right. Before they and what's your biggest challenge? Ridiculous quota uh, regulations, absolutely nonsensical, which uh, we unfortunately, you know, we've always had our traditional fisheries. We have to. We have to catch the fish that comes to us. We only really, very rarely move away from the front of my, you know, from the side of our front door. So we are not able to chase fish up and down the channel. So we have to be able to catch, you know, what comes to us. And at times, the only fish in the sea here are cod. And unfortunately, with the way the cod prices have gone. We um, we've pretty much have to discard the majority of their catch. 
just to keep the bit of fish that comes up with it. It's, it's a mad, mad system. And most of the fishermen here, well, all, all the fishermen I know, would much rather see a system of technical measures where fish landing sizes were increased, the minimum mesh sizes were increased, even the length of net or the days at sea or anything for a throw fish back. Right. So at least you go to sea and at least, you know, you can catch and keep the fish. But it looks like you've got one good bit of news that may be coming, which is you'll get a protected area here, which will be good for you, good for the cuttlefish, good for the shellfish. That's right, yeah. I mean, I've personally been trying to to get this area um, protected from mobile gear, uh, damaging gear. For, and what's uh, mobile gear? That's um, well, heavy trawl gear. Light trawl gear is a problem because with small foot ropes, they can avoid all the, they avoid all the hard ground and they just keep to the sand which is turned over anyway, so they don't do any harm, but it's uh, heavy, um, boat, heavy tow gear from boats, which are not local, they're uh, nomadic boats. Right. Which, because it's a productive area, they come into the area and... Um, so that's beam trawling, otter trawling, or...? Yeah, well, beam trawling, or heavy, heavy pair trawling, or okay. heavy otter trawling, where they use rock off the gear and, yeah. and tickle trawling. Okay, that's good.